Hello, you're watching TVP World. I'm Diana Sky, and this is Military Mind. Overnight into October 28th, Russian forces carried out another strike on Ukraine's civilian infrastructure. According to the country's Air Force Command, Moscow launched 38 drones in the attack. In the Chernihiv region, a recreation facility was hit, sparking a fire and wounding one person. In addition, overnight, Ukraine suffered the seventh massive attack on gas infrastructure since the beginning of October, resulting in damage to production facilities in the Poltava region. Meanwhile, Ukraine targeted Moscow as part of a wider drone attack for the second night in a row, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. The mayor of Moscow said emergency services were dispatched to the area where a drone heading towards the city was shot down. There were no reports of damage, though Russia rarely discloses the full extent of Ukrainian strikes inside its territory unless civilians or civilian sites are affected. In the Bryansk region, one civilian was hospitalized as a result of the drone attack. In the Belgorod region, the commander of Ukraine's unmanned systems forces, Robert Madyar Brovdy, confirmed that Ukrainian troops struck the dam of the Belgorod reservoir. According to Brovdy, the reservoir cracked on October 26th, and since the first strike on October 24th, the water level has dropped by one meter. Authorities have declared a state of emergency in the city, noting a rapid decline in water levels at the dam holding back the Siversky Donets River. On the front line, Ukraine's 16th Armed Corps released a statement on the situation near Vovchansk in the Kharkiv region, saying that while Russian forces have achieved local tactical gains, these came at a high cost amid the attack on the Belgorod Dam. As Moscow's logistics become increasingly complicated, Russian units that managed to cross the Siversky Donets are now largely cut off from their main forces. Although Russian troops have been attempting to storm Vovchansk for weeks, these latest assaults have intensified. The breach of the Belgorod Dam is not expected to stop Russian attacks entirely, but analysts say it will likely reduce their intensity and complicate resupply routes. Meanwhile, Ukraine's military command reports that intense fighting continues both on the outskirts of Pokrovsk and inside the city itself. Russian forces are trying to cut off key supply routes and expose Ukrainian logistics lines to drone strikes. Some Russian units have entered the city, but Kyiv denies claims that its troops are fully encircled. Pokrovsk has served as a key transport and logistics hub until 2024, and its loss would be a strategic setback for Ukraine, potentially opening new directions for a Russian advance. Ukraine's general staff has confirmed that around 200 Russian soldiers have entered the city, while intense clashes are being reported along more than a thousand kilometers of the front line. A group of young contract soldiers who recently joined the armed forces of Ukraine carried out their first combat mission. The task was clear, to sweep the landing zone where, according to intelligence reports, Russian units could be hiding. Now, the young fighters acted decisively and in a coordinated manner. They managed to eliminate several enemy positions and occupiers. This operation demonstrates how new recruits quickly adapt to the conditions of the real front line, from training to actual combat under enemy fire. For these soldiers, Rusinyar was the first test they passed successfully, demonstrating their readiness to defend their country. <laughs> Minus, minus, все, минус, я голову вы. Под ноги смотрите. Я уж все, мраз. Минус, это минус. Красиво. Атаман, один там не один. Один полно. Копался немного. Мы его так сильно не видели, потому что все внимание у нас все на левую сторону. Что там? Да я портом уйду. Видите, форда, фордом, иди где? Иди вот там. Пухой все. Пухой, не иди, не иди, не иди. Накрыто. Пидарова. Давай. 
Ой, красиво! Все. 200. Контроль, контроль, контроль. Контроль, контроль. Да я попал в фордом. А то форд? Да. С одного попадания я его выбил со строя. Левую сторону, левую сторону контроль ты. Да контроль. Не кричи, не кричи. Special units of the Ukrainian Special Operations Forces successfully carried out a precision strike on an oil depot and a frontline fuel storage facility belonging to the Russian invaders. According to the Ukrainian military, the tanks were full at the time of the attack, which significantly increased the effect of the strike. The fire engulfed the warehouse and adjacent buildings, completely destroying the facility. The stealth and coordination of the mission gave the Russians no time to take countermeasures. On the front lines, drones are not just the eyes and hands of military units. They're tools for reconnaissance, targeting, striking, and sometimes rescue operations. But even the most reliable drones sometimes disappear due to signal jamming, communication failure, shelling, technical malfunctions, or simply a dead battery. In the past, searching for such drones was incredibly risky, walking through minefields or enemy positions where every step could be the last. Now, when the front line is densely littered with pedal mines, mine traps, and enemy FPV drones, foot evacuation is too dangerous. Therefore, Ukrainian soldiers decided to approach the matter technically and created a modernized CAT to return drones. Now, each crew has its own CAT and a clearly defined evacuation procedure. This is no longer a one-off initiative, but a systematic effort that has returned dozens of drones to service and significantly reduced equipment losses in areas with intense enemy electronic warfare activity. Let's take a closer look. During combat operations, Ukrainian operators of the Ratata FPV crew of the 3rd Assault Brigade detected and successfully destroyed a Russian buggy that was attempting to remain undetected by camouflaging itself. According to the fighters, the enemy's defensive tricks did not work. The drones accurately hit the target, ensuring the complete destruction of the vehicle and its crew. That's all for this episode of Military Mind here on TVP World. I'm Diana Sky. Thanks for watching.